on the random. What does joining Hip Hop Now's Patreon mean? It means supporting the kind of hip hop content that keeps you updated on the latest hip hop news and moves. It means supporting the production of content like That Time in Hip Hop and Hip Hop Now Reviews. It means you care about the conversation and preservation of hip hop music and culture. Hip Hop Now Patreon supporters get access to bonus content, merchandise, and more. Support the movement. Become a supporter of Hip Hop Now Podcast today at patreon.com forward slash hip hop now. Coming up on this week's episode of Hip Hop Now Podcast, Big Daddy Kane and KRS One face off in the next installment of Versus. A new album from Dr. Dre is definitely on the way. And the fourth quarter album release blitz is here and we're going to talk about some of the best projects of the year so far from a different perspective let's do it read these headlines this album must be gone this album must be gone What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast designed to catch you up on all things hip hop, music, and culture that happen throughout the week. First and foremost, big shout out, super, super, super big shout out to the supporters of this podcast over at patreon.com slash hip hop now, the supporters the producers, whatever you want to call them. They are locked in behind the scenes of this podcast and you can become one of them as well by visiting patreon.com slash hip hop now. And last week I neglected, and it's my bad, to give a shout out the latest supporter over at patreon.com slash hip hop now. Big, 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 big extra shout out to Laverne, who came in at the My Summer Vacation level. If you don't know, that comes with perks. Becoming a Patreon supporter comes with perks regardless. But also, you have direct input into the production of this podcast. That is the main thing. So not only are you supporting something you basically enjoy, right? Because maybe you're here all the time. Uh, But you also get a say in the production. And as we go along, you know, we're going to get back on putting people into or putting Patreon supporters back into the mix as far as updates from myself. In the beginning, I used to do a lot of those. And then I kind of fell back and just started to do the work because I think essentially the people who currently support the podcast just want to support. But though there are those that actually, you know, want to have input. And I've implemented everything that uh, the producers of this podcast have either requested directly or showed interest in. You see what I'm saying? Like the video version of Hip Hop Now podcast, which you can find on the B-Roll Network on YouTube, all you have to do is click the link in the description and it'll take you right there to a number of links. It's a link tree. So you click link tree and it'll take you to audio versions, right, on Apple Music and all that good stuff, Spotify, whatever, but also the YouTube channel link, including a link to merchandise, is all in the description of this episode. Just click the link tree. You'll be good. Just, just do that and you'll be fine. Uh, But nevertheless, shout out to Laverne. We also did a, uh, you know, shout out to her via social media, which is a part of it. And if you would like to get a shout out, support the podcast and all that good stuff, you know what to do. Now, I promised to talk about this about a week and a half ago when we all found out it was going down. But... Things happen. P. 
people get busy and shows don't get to happen in the way you want them to happen. You know, it's a part of the production. But nevertheless, this week's show, we're not going to go through a ton of topics because to be honest, on the hip hop scene, a lot of what is being talked about has less to do with the music and more to do with controversy. And you know, like I know, there's so many hip hop outlets that cover rumors and, you know, controversy as it relates to hip hop. Now, don't get me wrong. We do talk about some of that. But for weeks when it dominates the news, I don't feel I'm doing you justice as a hip hop fan of Hip Hop Now podcast by telling you either things you already know or things you could care less about. People who come here want to hear what's going on in the world of hip hop that a hip hop head can be excited about or what's available. Now, I'll say this one quick thing, and this is a big shout out to someone who hit me on Instagram and said, basically, they are glad they follow me on Instagram at Vegas World INC because it is the way for them to find out what hip hop is available. Not just the popular hip hop, but really some deep dives of things that are just not popping up everywhere as new and, and available. So that is the whole purpose of my Instagram and social media is to do the same thing that the podcast does, which is inform you of what's out there. So if you follow me on Instagram at Vegas World INC and you just go through my pictures, maybe you're looking for what's out, right? This week, what's out the last couple of weeks, I probably listened to most of it. Now, I'm not saying most of it is dope, but a couple of pictures here and there on Instagram, a couple of posts, some links to the artists, and you would be aware, like, oh, there's a new record from this person, there's a new record from that person, you know? Uh, but we'll get into that part. But I want to start, first and foremost, with the first of top three stories or topics we're going to talk about today is the next installment of Versus. You heard it. I heard it. Big Daddy Kane versus KRS what? This is going to take place on uh, October 17th, which is a Sunday. If you're from the future, you know what to do. Get your ass out of here, homie. Uh, but, Sunday, October the 17th at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. But you know, like I know, you could also watch it on uh, Instagram and probably some other channels that I just, they don't pay me no money. So I'm not going to say anything about them. All right, it's Triller, okay? But let's get this out the way. Because we all hip hop heads, right? Especially the old heads. Younger heads who might think, oh, this is a dope matchup. It is. But it's not the one we want. We want Big Daddy Kane versus Rakim. Now, let me explain to those that don't know that say, well, what's wrong with this one? Nothing's wrong with this one. Nothing at all. But the reason why there are some of us who are kind of like, that really wasn't the one we wanted is because imagine if Jay-Z and Nas maintained their subliminals throughout their careers. They never had, there was never a takeover. There was never ether. It was only the subliminals that you know, like I know, had been going on way before those disc records were released. Like Nas versus Biggie, right? This really unspoken Beef, but maybe not real beef, but competitiveness. Who's better? You know, that's how we talked as fans. Who's who's better? Who you like better? Right? But you never get to the point where they actually come head to head in a battle. Keep your mind out the gutter. We don't do that poor stuff. But if you don't know, Rakim and Kane is like that, right? They were always considered 1A and 1B. 
Two very different styles of MCs. But always back in the days, compared to one another as who do you like better? Like that's a legacy conversation, right? Like I said, if Jay-Z and Nas had never confronted one each other, uh, one another on Ether and Takeover, we'd be wondering the same thing. We're still people still debate it, even with the disc records. But the point of the matter is Rakim versus Big Daddy Kane was something we always wanted. We always want to, we wanted a battle. We wanted this records, if that was the case. We wanted to see them fight it out, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, you know, since we're talking hip hop. But that's not what we're getting on the verses. Now, let me just speak to that battle real quick. I think my theory is because it seems like that was a no-brainer for Rakim to take on Big Daddy Kane. If you don't have Rakim versus Big Daddy Kane, Rakim can't even be in these verses. That was his opportunity. Because you can't put him up against anyone else. You can't put him up against LL. I'm sorry. Rakim would get smoked. He'd have his records. But LL got too many records for him. And they don't end after a certain era. Rakim's does. That's the the difficult truth. That's what makes Big Daddy Kane versus Rakim so much better, right? Because in their heyday, they were hot. And at some point, it cuts off. And they sort of, Big Daddy Kane's (laughs) era cut off before Rakim's. But Rakim wasn't exactly flourishing. He probably had his last hurrah when Kane fell off. Right? Just look at the juice soundtrack. Kane had already fallen off, even though I like the joint, uh, what's it, Nuff, Nuff Respect off the juice soundtrack. Um, but No the Ledge was it. Rakim was still it around the time of the juice, the movie, not OJ Simpson. Uh <laughs> or Rento. But you get what I'm saying, right? To me, that's the better matchup because it's the matchup that the hip hop fans wanted. It's it's a more comparable matchup, not necessarily in styles, but as far as the battle being embedded within a certain era of hip hop because neither of their careers went so far. Like LL, LL stopped. His last hit was like early 2000s. Kane and Rakim been out of the picture as soloists who had hits, been gone. So that's what would make it dope because it would make it feel like this era. So that now brings me to Big Daddy Kane versus KRS-One. Now, what takes a little bit of steam out of this is unlike KRS-One versus um, Big Daddy Kane, Big Daddy Kane versus Rakim, right? There was tension Big Daddy Kane and KRS-One, you would think, oh, Juice Crew, the bridge is over. KRS-One and Big Daddy Kane were friends for years, including during that time. And Big Daddy Kane was a part of the Juice Crew. So it's sort of like you're dissing the crew, but you're dissing certain crew members, but you ain't dissing your homie. So the tension isn't there. It's just not. It's not. This ain't... uh, uh, Jeezy and Gucci Mane. No, not that deep, you know. But it's just not. Or maybe that works well for Versus, right? Because Versus has gone from play your song, I play my song only to a performance. And if you have two legends in a hip-hop game, both from back in the 80s and are two of the best performers in hip-hop history, well, then you're going to get a show. But the hip-hop heads want to battle. And that will be there, right? Because please do not sleep. Big Daddy Kane put out two straight classic albums before he actually fell off. And if you listen to my recent podcast, 
Prince of Chocolate, right, <laughs> of me reviewing, re-reviewing Big Daddy Kane's albums that were considered flops, right, right after his two classics, Taste of Chocolate and Prince of Darkness. Taste of Chocolate, which was Big Daddy Kane's third album, is not as bad as you remember. If you want details on that, just listen to my uh, podcast. But it's not. It's really not. But nevertheless, Big Daddy Kane has enough hits to stand shoulder to shoulder with KRS-One until maybe the mid-90s. Because this is the thing with KRS-One. Not only does he have classics with Boogie Down Productions, dating back to the 80s and around the time that Kane was hot. But in the 90s, when he disbanded Boogie Down Productions and he just became KRS-One, the soloist, he put out, with the help of DJ Premier, Return of the Boom Bap. He also went on to have a couple of other really dope albums into the late 90s. So the thing is, is there's certain KRS-One records from much later outside of Kane's heyday that he could go to that are going to, they have to be played. There's no way, right? There's no way KRS-One can live in the late 80s only with his music. He can go 10 songs of, all right, Kane, I'm going to play records from when you were hot. You know, my records from the time when you were hot. But now I'm going to play records from the time when Nas was hot, Biggie was hot, Wu-Tang dropped, Tribe Called Quest was out. Kane had been fell off to most hip-hop fans, but KRS-One was going strong. So we know, again, these things are about performances, these things are about celebration of the music of these artists, and I think when you keep that in mind, this will be dope for hip hop heads. But there are some who say, yo, it's called versus and it is a battle. I, I'm going to say who's winning and who's losing. Then, not that Kane is going to play, I hope he doesn't play any of, the, <laughs> any of that whack music. But it's going, he's going to pull away. Uh, KRS-One is going to pull away in this battle because Kane is really limited to his first two albums. And that, you know, it's, he doesn't really come out of the 90s with anything dope that everyone knows, right? We ain't talking about that one record that dropped out of nowhere in like, what was that, late 90s, early 2000s, produced by... I think DJ Premier that was like, yo, this is Kane. It sounds crazy. But also, let's not forget that he'll have features, right, that can be played. So there are a number of records that Big Daddy Kane was featured on, right? He can play the symphony, right? <laughs> so the features will give Big Daddy Kane some stuff to, to play, right? He, he was on uh, Heavy D's Don't Curse. I don't know how many people remember that, but old heads would. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be entertaining for what it is. Um, am I going to watch live? I don't know, y'all. Me with Versus sometimes is really not about hearing records I haven't heard in a long time because it's like I tell people who I know and I'm not trying to be some kind of way, but I actually go back and listen. First of all, I own them, Right. I own the music of of my favorite MCs, but I frequently will like almost like spin the wheel and and listen to something I haven't listened to in a while. So there are KRS One songs that I've heard in recent years that will make some people like, "Yo, I forgot about this." Earlier in the year, I I was talking about Return of the Boom Bap by KRS One, and was like, "You know what? I hadn't listened to that album like." in its entirety in a while. And I played it, and I was like, man, this is dope. So once he starts hitting those records, you know, I'm going to be into it, but I won't be into it in the same way as a lot of other people will be. So maybe I'll do, typically, some people say, well, if you're not watching that, what else are you doing? Well, what else do we do when there's a verse that's on, right? It is Sunday. It is around the time of 
Sunday Night Football. I'm sorry, but I'm a big sports fan. But what I tend to do is I check in, see what's happening. Sometimes I check in just to see if they could draw me in, right? And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but I think it'll be interesting, and I think if you're a hip-hop head, you should definitely watch if you love hip-hop the way you say you do. I know some people would say, well, why don't you watch? Homie, I'm supporting old-school artists every day, uh, not just when a versus pops up. But I think you should check it out. If you're a person who's never seen these two perform and wonder, you know, what, well, what was it about them? I think Big Daddy Kane and KRS-One are fully capable of showing you why they were dope back in the days. Unlike Rakim, who I don't think it would have been as entertaining as much as we wanted it. So yeah, there, there, there you have it. That's my thoughts on the upcoming verses. Again, this is happening October 17th. Um, just follow verses on uh, Twitter and Instagram and you can stay locked in and get more information from them. But it should be dope. Should be a dope night for hip hop. Now, the third, the second story is uh, something I saw on hiphopdx.com. Shout out to them. The headline read, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre albums to start the aftermath takeover before end of 2021. Now, if you listen to the last installment of Hip Hop Now podcast, not the special stuff, but the last actual news podcast, um, I, you know, talked about the upcoming Super Bowl and the fact that it will be Dr. Dre led and it feels like a quasi death row, but pretty strongly without 50 cent um a aftermath thing so to hear them talk about the aftermath takeover i probably said it on that podcast but you can believe that dr dre is definitely releasing an album now this comes from dj battle cat look him up if you don't know your history on uh what was this this was on instagram this is what he posted on Instagram. The Aftermath Takeover has started. November 12th, Snoop Dogg. December, Dr. Dre new music. February 13th, Super Bowl performance. Soon, Kendrick Lamar. Soon, Exhibit, King Maker. And soon, Mount Westmore. Now, for those that don't know, Snoop Dogg released an album already this year that I thought was really dope. I almost don't want him to release anything new because, well, unless it's produced completely by Dr. Dre, then I'll take it. But I really like the album. But if Snoop has a new album coming out, I always check for him. So, And if, if Battle Cat is saying this to Aftermath Takeover, then it's probably going to be something I'm going to like. But he does say Dr. Dre in December. We all know Kendrick is coming eventually as far as his music. Also, Mount Westmore, right? That's the group with E-40, um, Too Short, I think. Well, I think it's five of them. E-40, Too Short, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Ice Cube, right? Kind of was looking forward to that one, so... That's dope. But let's focus in on Dr. Dre. And we want to focus in on Dr. Dre only because probably for the last five years, I've been low-key obsessed with the release of Detox. Now, this album isn't a follow-up to Chronic 2001, obviously, because that follow-up was supposed to be Detox. But eventually, we got an album from Dr. Dre, a very dope album, by the way, called Compton, inspired by the movie Straight Out of Compton. And if in recent years or recent months, in some cases, you've been paying attention to Dr. Dre's Instagram, he's been working not only with a lot of former death row artists, but he's been in a lab, big time, which made me think, oh, we getting detox. But that could just be one song, right? 
And we know Dr. Dre was on uh, King's Disease too, right? If Nas and Hit Boy was doing all this work, you know Dr. Dre was doing all this work during the pandemic. Now, do I think it's going to be detox? I think it should be. I think with Compton, it was different, right? Because the Straight Outta Compton trailer was out, right? They were doing, um, like NWA was like doing this whole tour of interviews and the hype was up big time for that movie. And then you just added, well, Dr. Dre has an album inspired by the movie. That just made it explode. And the album was dope. So it just felt like this huge moment. And I think that's what Dr. Dre aims for. He don't want to release anything in a vacuum and it's forgotten in a week. He wants it to be the biggest thing ever. And having that Super Bowl halftime performance like that, basically led by Dr. Dre, he wants the same momentum. And I think, personally, you can't call it Compton 2 or Aftermath Takeover or any other generic name. Compton got away with it because Straight Straight Outta Compton was a big movie that was coming out. This has to be detox. I mean, it worked for the attention of Jay Electronica. Now, he didn't actually fulfill the promise. I think he did in some ways, right? The joint with Jay-Z was dope, but really wasn't his album. And then he finally released his album, which some people liked and some people didn't. But Jay Electronica ain't Dr. Dre, right? So we're going we're gonna to see in December. And if you know, like I know, my top of the year album, best album situation I'm not like most outlets. I, you know, I try sometimes to play by their rules, but I'm not a oh that was released in December. I don't count it. No, I, I count everything up until Christmas at least, right? So if Dr. Dre is coming out the first week in December with Detox Two or Detox, not Detox Two, um, I definitely will consider it in my top five of the year or best of the year, but that's only if it's good, not because it's Dr. Dre, only if it's that good. So we shall see. Lastly, now, we did this at the halfway point of this year, right? After quarter two, FY21, Q2, right? Halfway point. What are some of the best projects of 2021 so far? Did a whole podcast on that. Typically around this time, I like to tease that a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I did last year, right? I'm going to, when we get to December, right, it's going to be, I'm going to have my top five in mind, and that will have its own special episode, right, that will premiere sometime before the new year. But prior to that, we will do an episode of some of the best projects of the year that will include my top five. You just won't know which ones are my top five. And I'm going to tell you right now, they change all the time. At Q2, right, we're in Q4, right, quarter four. This is the fourth quarter blitz. But at the halfway point in 2021, I already had a top five. And I was very confident, like, this is the best stuff out, y'all, I'm telling you. Well, probably only one, maybe two of those records have survived because we've gotten some incredible work since then. And it's it's difficult to keep them in there. Now, for those that don't know how I do my top five of the year, how I do my best of the year, you'd like it, right? Because you'd feel feel like it's a fair system. Now, if you you a fan of some dude named, you know, Hunchback Harry, you know, oh, he got that gutter dog, I can't listen to everything. I'm sorry. Uh, but if it bubbles to the surface as an underground darling or a mainstream darling, I definitely will give it a look. But if it's just you and him listening to it, nah, I'm good, B. 
I'm good. <laughs> but nevertheless, what I like to do is I know there's a good top 10 for me for 2021. And what I'll do is I'll go back and listen to each of those albums that I feel like are top five material. And I'll start to narrow them down to like get to five by listening again. Because what tends to happen, right? When, when we all, all these hip hop outlets and podcasts, when we all start to talk about the best of the year so far, and it's like summertime, by the time we get to December, when we're ready to put out our best of the year, we don't even remember what those early albums sound like. The only way we remember if it was something that came out early on that was so special, you won't forget it because you're still listening to it. Those belong in your top five. But there's just some albums that, you know, you're not listening that long. Or maybe you were listening a lot in the beginning, but new material came out and you switched to that. So my point is, is that I go back and listen to the best projects of the year. I also look at what other publications and outlets considered to be their best of the year. And not because I want to copy or I want to be in line with them. I want to see if they're in line with me, right? And I want to see if I missed something. I want to see if there's one album that appears on the list of damn near every hip-hop publication but doesn't appear on mine. That compels me to say, whoa, I must have missed something. And don't get me wrong. I remember last year, and I, sh- I won't name no names, but there was one particular album that popped up on a lot of lists, commercial lists, underground lists, all of that. And I was like, man, I don't even know who this cat is. Let me press play and listen. And I felt like it was boring. It was literally, we like it because it's different, not because it's good. And it did not make my top five. It did not make my honorable mentions because I'm judging the music based off of, obviously, my taste, but also what is your top five, right? Like my top five, if, 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 I, if you didn't listen to anything and you say, hey, look, I don't have no time to listen to all these albums. I'm just going to take whatever you say is your top five and I'm going to listen to that. The reason why I could give you my top five with confidence is because I'm not grading it only on dope beats and rhymes. I'm dating it, uh, uh, not dating it, I'm rating it on a system that is based off of creativity, rhymes, beats, concepts, production, like audio quality, stuff like that, right? Not everything has to sound crazy, but... I'm just saying there are levels to making a great album, right? Sequencing, everything. Sometimes some albums just come together so perfectly. Like Book of Ryan, right? From a couple years ago. Definitely was in my top five. That album is great. To me, hands down, Royce the Five Nine's best album project to date because it was an experience. The type of albums that we probably would have called classics back in the days. Now classic is so diluted, you know. Everything is so subjective. You, What is a universal classic to most people? But nevertheless, I have a very good list. And stay tuned to this podcast as we continue to listen to what's new. And then we talk about it. We talk about the best albums of the year. And then I'll give you my top five, you know, towards the end of the year. And I will definitely give you and every listener a in-depth breakdown of why I feel my top five of 2021 is the best of the best. That's going to do it for me for this week. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok Clubhouse at Vegas World INC. 
Also, please know that I have a YouTube channel, like I mentioned early on in the video. The link is in the description of this episode. It's the link tree. Just click the link tree and you'll see everything, right? This podcast is available wherever you get your podcast. If you click on that link in the episode, in the episode, the link tree, right? You'll see everything Hip Hop Now podcast is on and has to offer outside of the audio version. Until next time, y'all, I am not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace. Drop, drop it on the random. <laughs>